welcome back to Sell and Vic. So today is going to be quite a creepy video. We are going to be talking about a local haunting. It's very, very infamous for its haunted history and just all the stuff that has gone on in that area and just it's going to be an interesting story and I personally even have some experiences that happened since I visited there and being there myself, it's just pretty intense. It is honestly, in my opinion, I really truly believe it's haunted. I am a person who believes in the paranormal. I believe in ghosts. I believe that we do go somewhere after we die and it's possible that you could linger on the earth and you know, you could just stay around scaring people or you could do good for people or just stuff like that. I am a believer in those types of things. I do want to put a disclaimer before this video. It is probably not meant for children. You, If you are young and or if you have babies around, I probably would not suggest you have them in the room while you're watching this video. And if you can't do that, then you could go ahead and check out some other videos I have on here. I do do some story times if you are interested in those videos. I'll link in the cards up here if you would rather watch one of those. But for those who are staying, we are going to be talking about the Manger Hotel here in San Antonio. It is a hotel located downtown right next to the Alamo and it has a haunted history for sure. If you live here or if you're in Texas, I'm pretty sure you've probably heard about this hotel. It is really, really creepy. It is, it has a lot of background history and is pretty pretty brutal, pretty intense, but but today we are in our PJs. I thought that it would be a good vibe for this video since it's like scary stories, you know, usually you have them at sleepovers or you have them just, you know, as pillow talk. So, I mean, at least I do. I don't know if y'all talk about haunted stories right before bed, but to each their own, but Yes, so that is why I'm in my Halloween PJs. I am on my bed. We have some snacky snacks. I have, you know, hot Cheetos right here next to me. I have my water right here. We are just vibing out. And I do have my pillow. And we are going to be hugging, squeezing this pillow if I get a little bit nervous or scared. But I'm going to get through this video. It's going to be a good one. So if you want to hear about the Manger Hotel, go ahead and continue watching. Alright, so for those who stay tuned, thank you so much for sitting here with me and going through this horrific journey. It is going to be an interesting one. So, timeline history, I'm just going to go over it very briefly. This hotel was established in 1859 to present day. So it's still there, it still exists, It people still stay in the hotel. It's still an active and up and running hotel. It was first opened up by a man named William and his wife Mary Manger. They were German immigrants and they were here in San Antonio. They first owned a brewery and they sold like beer, like German beer and stuff like that. But they ended up opening up a hotel and they primarily wanted it for their brewery guests. So whoever, I guess, couldn't drive home or whatever, they could stay in their hotel safely overnight. It was a two-story, 50-room hotel to begin with, but it gained so much popularity so fast that they did add on to it quite quickly. They did add on three more stories to their two stories that they had, so it was a five-story hotel. But in 1881, William did pass away. I am not sure how. The There was no information online of how he passed away. It was just lost to history. Mary did want to keep the hotel up and running. She, want, she had kids with William, so I'm assuming she wanted to make ends meet and continue the legacy of this hotel. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but she did end up selling the hotel in 1881 to a man that went under the name Major J.H. Capman. 
he was, I believe, in the army. I think they transferred the currency from then to now, and if you would have bought it present day, it would have been $2.8 million. But he did also add on all the furnishings in the hotel and all, everything. He wanted everything, and that was gonna be like another $250,000, 250000 so it was almost like. 3.5 million it was a lot he did buy the hotel from her and then he also was quick to do some renovating onto the hotel he added i think like 125 more rooms onto the hotel and he kind of just upgraded everything he made marble floorings he made like better um, quality of just everything he added ac units to the rooms and like he made a bar all this stuff he just made it super like extravagant it was so popular back in the day that there were so many famous people i mean in today's day like teddy roosevelt he frequented the manger bar that they had there and he stayed there a lot and also if you guys are in texas you probably know who king's ranch is or what it is the brand it is really popular but the man that opened or the man that created king's ranch his name was captain richard king he created king's ranch but he was a frequent guest at that hotel as well so much so that he has some haunted history there as well so that's pretty much the timeline that i wanted to cover now we're going to get into the haunted history if you look up manger hotel ghosts the majority of the time the first name to pop up is going to be sally white she was a maid that worked there and she was really well known back in the day. Everyone loved her. She was said to be a very beloved employee. Mary Manker really loved her. She absolutely adored her working there and really appreciated everything she did. She was a maid, like I said, so she pretty much like made the beds, folded towels. I'm sure you guys know all that. All the things that maids do. She, they, she is said to haunt the third floor. But I do want to get into her more detailed later. Right now, I'm just going to go over all the ghosts that haunt the manger. So Sally White is the most popular one. The next one is Captain Richard King himself. He does have a history there, but we are also going to be debriefing more of why later. But those two, I do really want to get into. As far as them, there are a lot of sightings of like older women that are sitting in the lobby and they'll be knitting but they're not really there there is said to be a young blonde boy it was specific in the article that i was reading but it was a it said young blonde boy that plays around in hotel guests rooms in the middle of the night a lot you'll hear him running around laughing stuff like that and since it is right by the alamo it is said to be heard of the soldiers marching so they constantly hear or not constantly but they hear frequently soldiers marching through the halls down the streets they just hear it off in the distance but it's right next to the alamo where a really big battle happened and there was a lot of deaths there it's i mean it's bound to happen, you know? But continuing off of sightings of ghosts, there is also reports of people seeing beds levitating off the ground, which literally makes my spine cringe. Oh my god, I really hate like that. Mm, no. It's like exorcist type, type stuff, but yeah, it's said to, or there's people reporting that, that they see beds levitating and they don't it's like un, there's no reason why it would be there's a lot of people that say that they'll be in the bathroom mirror and just maybe checking their face and they see a almost translucent face right next to theirs and it's not just one person reporting it it is hundreds of people reporting that happening to them which is really creepy it just kind of makes you feel like when you wash your face and you open your eyes and there's something there is like oh, oh my god i would have a heart attack and then there's also reports of heavy doors opening and closing on their own and they say that like they they themselves struggle opening the door so there's no reason how a draft could just 
swoop it open by or it opening by itself um, is just really weird, you know. And it's not like every door doing that, so obviously the hotel is balanced. It's not, you know, having sinkholes or anything. It's pretty leveled out. So it's kind of odd that only certain doors do that. And I don't know, it creeps me out at least. And also, like I said earlier, Teddy Roosevelt really loved going to the bar there. And there are many, many, many reports that people have sightings of him in the bar. Um, it's so normal that the employees laugh about it and they're so used to it. And there's reports that the employees themselves see them or see Teddy Roosevelt so often and have conver actual legit conversations with Teddy Roosevelt. Like they'll sit there at the bar, serve him a drink, and not really, but practically, and just have a normal conversation with him. And it said that the most common thing that he talks about with these people is like his recruiting, like his recruiting lines and stuff, and always wanting people to march with him and battle with him. So every time he gets a chance to talk to someone at the bar, he'll be talking about how they should march with him and continue on with him and stuff like that is really crazy that it's so normal for the manger employees like ah like that's so creepy but yeah that's pretty much like the craziest thing about Teddy Roosevelt now I kind of want to get into Sally White the first one that I mentioned she's really commonly seen on the third floor that is to be said where she had passed away or <laughs> murdered is like the real word for it. Like I said, she was a really beloved employee. Everyone loved her. She was really, really popular in the hotel and with the hotel guests. But it wasn't the same at home. It was said that her husband was very jealous and very envious of her popularity and he did not like that she was so popular for some odd reason. A lot of fights were caused by that. <sighs> Sorry guys, my camera kind of shut off for some reason. Um, it didn't even like see what was wrong. I'm assuming it was overheated, but I don't know. Anyways, we left off talking about her husband and how he was so jealous and that he caused fights at home and all that stuff because he just didn't like that she was so popular. There was this one fight where it kind of escalated a little much to where he backed her up into a corner and these are all just reports um, and articles I've read, you know, and things I've heard personally. But it was said that she was backed up into a corner by him and he threatened her life pretty much. He said he was going to end her you know all that stuff so he told her that and then right when he did that she somehow ran away out from the house and everything and she ran down to the police station the police heard her out heard why she was freaking out and panicking and they decided to keep her overnight and for her safety which is awesome but yeah they let her stay overnight and the husband goes back home or doesn't follow her and then the next morning she gets out of the police station she goes back home to retrieve some items because she was going to go to work so she goes home to get ready for work and as she's there she noticed her husband's waiting for her with a fully loaded pistol so he had that in his hand she saw it she started freaking out she leaves her home running 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 she ran all the way to the Mango hotel which was said to be two blocks from her house and so she was running 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 and trying to get away from him and she felt like she would be safe at the hotel and she would get some help so that's why she went there she was I guess hysterically running around and she couldn't find help and her husband had caught up to her in the end and ran up to her this is where it gets kind of graphic or i mean a little bit but he runs up to her he gets her by the neck pulls her closer and lets off a round into her abdomen um it wasn't said what side or anything but in her stomach she got shot 
and then she got out of his grasp somehow and she started running and he shoots her again in her left spine that's that they were specific about that one in the article it says that she had I guess survived somehow um, because I don't know I'll leave I'll leave all the articles I read in the description box, but it said two days later that she had passed away on the third floor. But it's not clear on like the specifics of did she survive the shot or like did it infect or affect her in a way where she was alive but then she like was internally bleeding. It, I don't know. I'm assuming that's why they said that, but they did say that two days later she died at work on the third floor where she worked her that was where she was stationed and that is why they say that they all like there's guests that stay there to this day and ever since then that they will see her walking down the hall they will see her folding sheets on the end of the bed that they're sleeping on um, they were said to be her folding towels in the bathroom and stalking it and she's pretty much just working to this day she never left her job. She may have left the world and in this dimension we are in or whatever you want to call it, but she is still in the manger working and arriving to work every day still. So there's a lot of sightings of her and just seeing her doing her job. And she is in her uniform still. Um, she's just like the most popular ghost still and it's funny because while she was alive or it's not funny it's crazy that she was so popular when she was alive and she's so popular even after she died you know and it's kind of crazy how life works out you know but yeah she is the most frequently seen ghost at the Manger Hotel the second most frequent frequently seen ghost is Richard King, he's King's Ranch owner and creator. He he loved the manger. We're gonna move on to his story now. He is popular over there as well. He actually, when he was alive, he loved the manger hotel. He went there all the time. He went there for pleasure. He went there for vacation. He just loved the manger hotel. And because, you know, it's still, a really popular hotel but back in the day it was like the hotel to be at it was said that it was the best on this side of the Mississippi so they Manger Hotel has a big name and it's a household name here in San Antonio at least but it is a really popular hotel um, so he also like just went there all the time all the time and he loved the Manger Hotel so much that he actually, in his late life, he got sick, very gravely ill. He knew he he knew he was in his last days on Earth, and his request was to stay in his favorite room. He literally has a room named after him, and it was his private suite. He went and stayed in that room all the time and he requested to go stay in his suite and he ended up passing away in that room. And it's said and reported and it's crazy and ugh, to me, but the same bed that he died in is still in that room. <laughs> I get chills but yeah. So pretty much if you go stay in that room, you're sleeping where he died, literally. They said at least the frame, they replaced the mattresses and all that stuff, but they said that the bed frame is the same frame that he loved and he you know, pretty much slept in all the time and passed away in that bed frame or using that bed frame, which is so crazy, but yeah, so. That is how he has history there. Um, sightings of him. Well, they constantly see him. They always, and it's since him staying in that hotel, it has been renovated and moved around a little bit. But they said that the 
suite he stayed in they had moved the door down a little bit so it's just a wall where the door used to be but the people that see him see him walking through the wall into the room but he would walk into the part of the wall where the door used to be i hope y'all are following that but so pretty much where he's used to entering the room he still goes that way into the room and but it's a wall now so it's super crazy to like imagine to see that but he's walking through a wall essentially to whoever spotted him but to him he's just walking into the room normally how he's used to doing it and that's crazy but that's frequently reported and and people that stay in that room also always say that they have the sense of them being watched all the time there's a lady that had stayed there and she woke up in the middle of the night and he was standing at the end of her bed <laughs> and just watching her sleep so oh my god <laughs> There was a bird that flew past the window, but yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of reports of, because they have shutters in their rooms, and there's reports of it actually opening and closing on its own. And some people even report hearing them open and close on their own, but they don't see it opening and closing. They just hear it, which is weird, but. And they also report hearing, speaking of hearing, footsteps throughout the room. They'll hear it all times during the day, at night time, stuff like that. They'll hear footsteps in the room, like just someone walking, but there's nobody there. And then a weird report, and I think it's weird as well, that there's always seen, or there's a lot of people that see a dancing red orb, that's what they call it. And if y'all don't know what orbs are, they're pretty much like little balls of light. And to those who believe in ghosts and paranormal, it's said to be those balls of light are actually spirits or they're, they're actually spirits or like ghosts and stuff like that. And they're just coming in the form of an orb. And it's most commonly seen if you are taking pictures with flash or if you're recording with flash it's a lot more easier to see but there's a lot of people that say that they take pictures and there's like a red orb and it's either in the room or outside of the room and that's just a lot it's seen a lot and reported a lot all right now we're done covering the two most popular ghosts seen at the manger hotel now we're gonna go ahead and just debrief on some of the random sightings but there's also some reports of crazy things and this is where it gets uh, dark again as most of y'all could probably assume there's a lot of murders that went on in this hotel um it was back in the day it was cowboys and all that stuff it's you could imagine you know um but on top of that there were a lot and crazy amount of numbers of people actually committing um yeah there's a bunch of people that actually ended their life in the manger hotel i know that's kind of like a trigger word i might bleep it out but yeah they you get the idea pretty much but there was a lot of reports of seeing people who have been killed in the manger um people who actually harmed themselves in the Manger Hotel. There's a lot of people that see them. And it's the most creepiest thing to me. It makes me think of that movie 1408. There's so many reports of people saying that they actually see the last moments of those people's lives play out pretty much. Like they just see it happen and then they're gone and they disappear which is really crazy. Um, there's this one article that, or there's this one young man that I did read about. I didn't get his name, or I probably said it, but I didn't remember. But he actually worked at the Manger Hotel. 
he was an employee there. I believe he was like a receptionist or a bar tender. I don't know, 100%. But I know he worked there. Um, it was said that he came down with an illness. It wasn't clear on how or what it was. Um, he did get really, really sick. And the way they say it is that he got so sick that he got sick of being sick. So I guess it was just a really rough day. He wasn't feeling good. He actually went into one of the hotel rooms at the Manger. And yeah, I'm not going to say it, but and ended his life in the bathroom. And it said that people actually see him doing that and then he disappears, which is insane. And I think that is the creepiest thing to imagine. Like, I don't want to imagine that. Like, it makes me want to, like, uh, like, you know, I don't like the idea of that. <laughs> but it happens and it's reported a lot and yeah. There's actually reported to be between 32 and 45 ghosts that haunt that Manger Hotel. And uh, that's crazy. But, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you're into ghosts and haunt hunting ghosts, you should definitely check it out. Um, I'm pretty sure you're going to capture something. I actually have personal experiences in that hotel. I was going to make it all one video, but I feel like this video is going to be long enough. Um, so I'm probably going to be making a part two to this and talk about my experiences and what happened with me when I was there, how I ended up going there, and stuff like that. Um, I'm even considering revisiting this hotel if they're allowing people to go right now and checking it out with you guys. So leave in the comments down below if you would like to see a video like that and I will definitely make it happen. But as for right now, this is going to wrap up today's video. Please give it a big like for some support and me telling this scary story and it being almost time for me to go to bed. I don't know what I was thinking honestly but yeah thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel. It would mean a lot to me if you did. You don't have to though but I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.